Welcome back to Inside Politics. Time now to talk about the Trump economy and the president's trade war. As of this morning, new tariffs are in place on more than $100 billion worth of Chinese goods. The list includes clothing, shoes, sheets and pillows, sports equipment, kitchenware and even diapers. Tariffs are a tax on imported goods and likely mean higher prices for American consumers. Even some top Republicans worry the trade war could also trigger an election year recession. One of them is U.S. Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. But here's what President Trump thinks of that. So what does Pat Toomey want me to do? Does he want me to say, let me put my hands up, China, continue to rip us off. Let me give up right now, China, <laughs> even though we're winning. Let me give right. up right now. You continue to take out... 400, 500, 600 billion dollars out of our hide. Continue to steal our intellectual property. Continue to do all of the other horrible things you've been doing to us for 30 years. Now to be sure, unemployment still is near historic lows and consumer spending remains strong. But a poll out last week illustrates the threat the president is facing. For the first time since he took office, more Americans say the economy is getting worse than it is getting better. And more Americans say Trump economic policies policies are hurting rather than helping. Now, uh, I wonder, Michael, you cover the White House for, for the New York Times. How nervous is the White House right now of a, of a possible recession? I mean, look, they're certainly nervous. It's central to his argument for re-election is that the economy is good. He says it all the time in every setting. Um, I, I think one, I was with the president in France at the G7 uh, last weekend. And I, I think one of the things that came out there was you know, that the level of uncertainty that that hangs over this subject area, that hangs over the trade subject, because the president isn't operating on a straight line. It's not like you can look, it's sort of like the track of a hurricane in the sense you can't look and sort of predict what he's going to do at any moment. Just in the few days that we were in France, he went back and forth, and at one moment, uh, President Xi of China was an enemy, and the next moment they were trying to, right. you know, uh, kind of restart negotiations over the trade, uh, the trade stuff. And so, as bad as the impact is that people are feeling the impact of the of the of the uh, of the actual tariffs, the the I think in some ways uh, hanging over the kind of whole subject is the question of you just don't know uh, whether you know today's optimism that 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 we're on a path towards resolution is going to be you know, what we feel tomorrow or a week later or, or a month later. And it's clearly not the way the president has built this mm -hmm. trade war. I mean, initially, he said the tariffs would help level the playing field. He said that it would reduce the trade deficits. But both sides are digging in. China responding today, saying they're not backing down. The president is not showing any signs of backing down. And U.S. consumers may take the brunt of it. Uh, well, and this tranche of tariffs is really different than other tranches because of how much it affects consumers. We've heard a lot in previous rounds of, of this escalating trade war about the effect on businesses, especially farmers, and certainly they have felt the brunt of it. Uh, the question is, are consumers going to start to notice prices going up for things that you that you buy at Target, right? Uh, because that really has been a little bit down the supply chain from where the tariffs have hit previously. Also new tariffs on fuel, which has not been a part of the trade war up to now. Uh, so there's a potential for, I think, a cascading effect if consumers start to lose confidence, if businesses uh, start to cut back on investment because of the uncertainty as well as because of the, the rising prices. And that's when you may get uh, the fear, I think, on the part of the White House and others, is that you could get a, a cascading uh, economic effect that becomes impossible to stop. And look at how these are some of the companies that have raised concerns about tariffs hurting them, a number of some major uh, American companies, multinational uh, firms, yet the president when he was asked about the companies raising concerns, this is what he said. A lot of badly run companies are trying to blame tariffs. In other words, if they're running badly and they're having a bad quarter, or they're just unlucky in some way, they're liking to blame the tariffs. It's not the tariffs. It's called bad management. <laughs> bad management. Now, is this tenable position for the president to take? Well, you know, we'll see. Uh, th this is a nuanced issue, and President Trump doesn't always do nuance that uh, well. But, um, yeah, you've seen, like, the Chamber of Commerce split with him on this. Like, but here's the thing. The White House has always known and has always said, when you have, like, a substantive discussion with, um, you know, someone in the NEC or in the trade areas, that uh, this is a long game. 
that uh, the U.S. believes in, that it can afford to absorb some of the difficulty in the near term to put the heat on China in the long term, that nothing's going to change if they don't do this, that they understand that this is a real fight with repercussions. But it is overlaid against the reality of our election cycle versus China's, which is not really like a thing, right? So there's president for life and president for one or maybe two terms. And there's a different calculus and a different pace there. Uh, but for the president, in terms of his support, this message on, uh, on sticking it to China is really powerful, both with his base within the Republican Party, but also some of that crossover appeal to uh, sort of independent or even some Democratic voters, uh, union voters. So it, it's, he has felt that it is really important to stick to this message, not just because it's one of the few ideological things that you can say he believes yeah. in. Like, and what does he believe in guns? We don't really know. One, what does he believe on trade? One of the know. things that he does believe in that he's trying to re-energize his base around is the wall, what mm -hmm. to do about the wall. And we learned last week about his efforts to redouble efforts to try to build the wall. Uh, CNN, Washington Post, others reporting uh, about him uh, apparently suggesting that he would be willing to pardon individuals who may break the law uh, if they were to commit illegal acts to move forward. This is how uh, CNN reported it. Uh, Trump sources say is searching for an accomplishment to run on in 2020 and realizing time is running short to fulfill some of the key promises he made to voters in 2016. Trump has recently told aides he would pardon them if they committed illegal acts while fulfilling his demand to build a wall on the southern border by 2020, two officials confirmed to CNN. Now, Trump says these stories are made up. His spokesman said that he was just saying it in sort of mm -hmm. a joking way. But clearly, the president still sees this as what will energize his base. But if they don't move forward in building the wall, will the base not come out? I don't know if I think that they won't come out. I mean, a lot of people who are avid Trump supporters appear to have been with him from the very beginning, are still with him. Amongst the Republican base, his numbers are still strong. But this is very much a key pillar of his reelection campaign. His, uh, from when he launched in 2015 to now, his major theme has been uh, building the wall. It's been about immigration. It's been about grievance politics. And so I, I don't expect that that's going to change at all. Yeah, and of course, we'll hear more about that.